What's up guys, it's Toronto to our tube and today we are talking about the Kaka Man. There's a reason you've never heard of the superhero. All he does is bring destruction wherever he goes. Alright, let me explain what's going on. Since February, Riddler Koo has been given us small hints about Scarlet and Violet. And then around July 8th, Kaka Man showed up on Twitter and started posting about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We don't know if they're real leaks, but it got the attention of Riddler Koo who we know is legit, and the ancient Chinese leaker as well. Since the last time I recorded a video, Kakaman, who blocked me because he hates me, deleted his account shortly after. He couldn't stand it. I blocked T-Tube. And since then, he's created another account and has showed information there. And then shortly after, many people trying to become the Kakaman started making accounts to look hip for example this person stole his exact username of the account he deleted why would kakaman you, you freaking idiot kakaman didn't want to be found out so he deleted his twitter you think you're gonna register under the same name look at some of the stuff the fake kakaman here has tweeted underwent changes for doubt what does this even mean and then he made a tweet saying in seven more hours something oh, like a trailer in two more hours is 2 a.m est you think pokemon gonna drop a trailer at 2 a.m in our time zone pokemon ain't gonna do the whole wake up fans we have a trailer for you at 2 a.m apparently only i get that there's levels of disrespect to achieve cat command level disrespect you're probably a translator or a marketer for pokemon for me when it came to riddler coup the riddles were so annoying but i loved it way more than i hated it they're only annoying because I'm not smart enough to solve them. The thing Pokemon did in 2013 and the things Koo are doing now are constantly putting our brains in this uncertain state where you don't know what's real or not, you have an idea and you just want to see it confirmed. Everyone's theories about Mew 3, about what Ninfia was, everyone's speculating new typings. This is when things are the most fun. Now I gotta cover the Kakaman trilogy the harry potter and the Krakaman seven books i can't pretend this doesn't exist and speculate about rumors if the answer is here so we're gonna get through this but Kakaman, just know we're boxing in four days you better never show your face on the internet again now what kind of name is Kakaman? he was born with that name i got a summary here of stuff Kakaman has talked about that we'll go through but first we're going to the <laughs> filler arc Riddler Koo. So 18 hours ago, on July 12th, Koo tweeted this. Little brother into big sister. There are some ideas going around like maybe Nimona has a little brother somewhere in the game. Maybe it's literally this red-haired rival. <laughs> but a different way to look at this tweet after I've stared at it for long enough is maybe it's not talking about into, but it's a passage of time. So in the past little brother, in the future, big sister. That's my best way to look at this tweet. Cool, you have an iPhone? Tweeted from iPhone at local Starbucks. The first thing that comes to mind is Karadam being a little brother and Maradam being a big sister. But that's the same thing we had with Zashin and Zamazenta. Another idea that could be time related is maybe this has to do with the professors. Let's pretend the two professors came from different time periods. Maybe Professor Sada in the past has a little brother and Professor Turo in the future has a big sister. Maybe when you learn more about the professors, there's a character arc to them where you learn about their time period. I say all this, but watch the professors not even be from different time periods. Moving on, Kuden tweets, I can't believe you, bro. Oh, someone is going to help me in the comments. Oh, sucker, we have no business to do. Help me. Help me with the riddle. We're, we're still doing this? I thought y'all gave up. I'm going to be honest. I don't know if this is even a riddle. I feel like this is just an intermission to quickly jab at Centro. <laughs> and then we move on. Okay. No, 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 no. When we translate it, it says... Uncle was also forced inside the volume, horse. The road millions, safety first, driving irregularities. Obviously, this translation is completely wrong. Maybe what he's trying to say is something related to the Kaka Man, who recently mentioned something like there being a dolphin Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. So maybe Koo's just teasing that as well. Next up, Koo tweeted this. The guy showed you pictures of grass and water, plus mine, now you know them all. Unless Riddler Koo is trolling, the sucker is telling us the Kakaman is real. Want to know the pictures Koo is talking about? I'll show you them. I haven't seen them myself. There are maybe four or five photos for me to go through. Here is picture number one. Now, maybe this video will get taken down. Because this is some illegal crap right here. But if you squint your eyes really hard, what this is rumored to be is Quaxley's second form. Now I start to see it. 
Hey yo, I'm about to draw. So here's the outline. Here's the hat of the Quaxley evolution. There's this beak right there. You can totally see it. But that's not actually the photo he's talking about. The photo of this Pokemon's further evolution is this. Apparently. Remember we saw this photo earlier and we were speculating all sorts of things it could be? Apparently this is Quaxley. I would assume that these are Quaxley's arms and his head is somewhere up here. What is this right here? Does he have a giant sword? Now, Ku does say that the photos Kakaman showed are from the back. So maybe there's a proper way to see this. Maybe these are the Gogeta life jackets on Quaxley's two shoulders that face kind of back. Maybe this dude's got this giant like wave behind him. And then of course, the grass one exists. Now, when Ku described Sprigatito's final evolution, he said it becomes a whole waifu. I don't think a fully evolved form for Sprigatito was shown, this is the only photo. Sprigatito just loses all green. The petals around its neck turn pink. So we'll see where that goes there. For Quaxley's final form, here's Toby, who drew a sketch from that image. So here's the back of Quaxley, like we're supposed to look at that image. And here's a recreation for the front. Damn, this guy swinging at you as a fighting type? He looks sick. He's gonna be the Blaziken of this game. We move on to his next tweet. Its avatar is the new concept thing that I decided to tease in September. Around a week ago, Ku did say that for Scarlet and Violet to be open world, that they'd need to have a ton of new systems, gimmicks, and concepts. These are one of the new concepts he was going to talk about. Some avatar. What he seems to be referring to is some Jigglypuff-like screenshot that was going around. I'll show you that later. Later, Ku tweets, That guy mentioned cross-gen evolution stuff. Help to supplement. 12225. So as you'll see when we move on to C-Man. Oh, he's K-Man. He's gonna mention some cross-gen evolution stuff. So far, one of the big ones Ku kinda teased to us was a Dunsparce evolution. The other four are a mystery, but we'll probably have our answers when we go to the other side. Okay, now it's time to go through Kakaman. As you'll see when we go through it, he doesn't know too much information, which just solidifies to me that he's probably not working on the game. He's on the outer team for Pokemon. So let's go through it. And remember, while he's real, some of these could be lies. One of the first notable things he tweets is that not all Hisuian Pokemon are in Scarlet and Violet. There's not that many Hisuian Pokemon. It's kind of weird not all of them are in the game. But sure, this is Game Freak. We're used to this. Every starter Pokemon from the first eight generations are not in the game. That includes Charizard. Damn, Masuda. They're mad at Charizard now. I never thought I'd see the day. You would think there'd be some exceptions, like Charizard Greninja. One of the alleged gym leaders even looks like a Greninja. A lot of people thought they'd have it on their team. It was not even in the game. The regional decks for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has over 400 Pokemon. The Sword and Shield regional decks had exactly 400 Pokemon. It's still only half the Pokemon that exist. And he also tweeted that there isn't a national dex in this game, which means we'd be stuck with this 400-ish Pokemon for the main game, the post game, and even the meta game, which is kind of weird. No starters for the meta game? Okay, I'm here from the future to talk about the next one. He said something like there being four semi-legendaries in the game, and we were speculating that maybe he meant pseudos, the Tyranitar line we saw in the trailer, along with three others. But when we found the tweet and Poke Sudami properly translated from Japanese, the term he uses is slightly different. It sounds more like sub-legendaries, like Zapdos. So it seems like he's talking about actual extra legendaries in the game, which is insane. Again, there can be lies mixed with his tweets, but look at X and Y, Sword and Shield pre-DLC. Game Freak's used to not adding legendaries, so I really want this one to be true. Ho-Oh and Lugia are not in the game with the new form. I have no idea what this means. I never asked about a form. We heard that there is a new dolphin Pokemon. This is probably what Riddler Koo was teasing. Wow, I guess Gorbis is kind of a dolphin Pokemon. Wow, look at this, bro. This man looks like he, he had a bite taken out of him. This is actually not a bad design. Let's have some lore in this game, like the dolphin Pokemon hunting all the octillery in the ocean. I don't know why that would be exciting, but okay. We saw this in the last video too. He says Dunsparce has an evolution in this game and that that evolution doesn't fly, which is one of the big ideas that it would become this dragon and fly around. He could still turn into a dragon, but maybe this man still digs around. Komala has no evolution. Bro, I know. <laughs> Foy Coco's evolution looks like an alligator. Kakaman says that its final evolution touches the ground. The vibe people got from that is that he would be on all fours like an alligator. But even, but technically, even if you're standing up, you'd be touching the ground. Girafferig has an evolution. 
You can actually catch a glimpse of this. When I scrolled through his Twitter fast in an earlier video, he posts the image of what we thought was Giraffe Rig's regional fake, but it turns out this is Giraffe Rig's evolution. And it doesn't even look like a variant that evolves. It looks like the Giraffe Rig we all know and love, that he gets the evolution into this. So it's not no imposter thing when we see the tail over its head, it's just the direction Game Freak decided for its evolution, for it to put its heads together. <laughs> I still like that design. Pommy has an evolution. This is the Pommy image we saw earlier. So you telling me for the first time since Pikachu, a Pikachu clone is gonna evolve? And this is what it becomes? You, you better evolve again. I can't keep you like that. Pummy evolving like he has starter Pokemon. That form looks like a center starter form. Wouldn't it be kind of cool if Game Freak started a trend where they introduced an electric type that kind of acts like a fourth starter? They're probably not going to start now, but that'd be a cool idea. Check this one out. No new fossils. Game Freak. Bro, you invented this. You invented fossils. You invented evolutions. Where, why are y'all abandoning them? You know, everyone says Pokemon is running out of ideas. Apparently they have way too many that you can't just bring back some fossils. Coridon and Maridon don't have five forms. So based off the logos of Scarlet and Violet, the five symbols you can see on the covers and the five ride Pokemon in Legends Arceus, we kind of theorize that maybe they would have different forms for you to ride no matter the terrain, climb up cliffs, fly around, but I guess they can just do it all, which makes sense too. Crydon got webbed hands, he can swim, he doesn't have to turn into a sailboat. Riding on these two's back, they look like they could do everything. You can ride them like a bike, you can cross water and climb cliffs on them, you can sniff the ground with them too. The only thing they maybe can't do is fly. Maridon can definitely fly, maybe Crydon can fly too, but by jumping. You laugh at me, but the move bounce is literally you jumping in the air. So if there's a part of the game where you can fly on Coridon, the dude could very well just jump in the air and then you're just flying around on him. Foycoco's final evolution does not look like a snake. It's been a long run. The Chinese Zodiac theory is officially dead. So long as you don't come out with a weird face, I want to see was a crocodile. He says there's a new flamingo Pokemon. Of course there is. And we even have a picture to support but you don't get to see that now. When asked if the champion is a girl, he replies half yes, half no. Oh, I can't, I got it. I think I got it. I think very well what could be happening here is that the champion depends. I think depending on which version you pick, the champion is either a girl or a boy. What kind of girl boy counterparts could it be? There's the professors, but bro, the professors ain't about to pull up as the champions. Another idea is maybe it's your counterpart character, if that's like your third rival in the game, but that's not very exciting. What would be cool is we have the idea that Nimona and this dude might be your rivals, right? What if it's not like an X and Y where Serena is the important one and the other mans are just hanging out? What if depending on maybe which version you have or which player you choose to play as, either of them become the champion. Or even cooler, remember Ku's riddle about Detroit become human? This tweet right here. One interpretation for this riddle is the change in story depending on your choices. Not big story changes, but maybe throughout the game, depending on which options you pick, it makes one of your rivals the champion over the other. Hey yo, that's sick. I want this to be real now. I can't believe the thing that most intrigued me here is the only mystery here, the only riddle he posted. Murkrow has a new evolution. We saw this. I feel like it's kind of going to be a counterpart to Sneasel, so maybe it's a regional Murkrow that evolves. Wooper gets a regional form. Cool, it freaking happened, bro. In terms of RFs, remember the Tauros riddle and the water ground type riddle? It was probably Wooper. So Wooper has a regional form where he turns into a poison type. And he even says that Wooper evolves differently. Quagsire's dead. The only thing that comes to mind when I think of Wooper evolving differently is a giant mega swampert looking Pokemon. I can't believe they decided to put respect on Wooper's name. Anyhow, remember Ku said 12225? We don't know what the one is, but one of the twos would be Giraffe Rig. One is Murkrow? And one is Wooper, I guess. But Wooper. Is it really a cross-gen evolution? We'll take it for now. Now all that's left is a Gen 1 and Gen 5 cross-gen evolution. Whoa, a Gen 1 cross? What if it's like Jinx or something? Wow, that's never happened in so long. Damn, aside from Pokemon Legends with Cleaver, they never made a cross-gen evolution 
to a Kanto Pokemon since like Sinnoh. That's kind of exciting. I want it to be Jinx just to complete the Magmortar trio. Anyhow, uh, we already know, but he himself says that a Gen 5 Pokemon gets a new evolution, which is interesting too. What Pokemon from Gen 5 could you evolve? Bro, better not be freaking Watchog, I swear. It also better not be an alternate Herdier evolution. Oh, Maractus? Oh, hell no. Nah, nah, nah. Y'all are not evolving Maractus. Let me look at Maractus's base stats. 461? Why, why did they put... Bro, it might be Maractus. Or Sigilyph. Amoongus? Or Ola Momola? Okay, that's kind of cool. You see, guys? It's the things that you don't know that have you the most interested. Mega Evolutions do not return. We know how it works now. We knew it wasn't returning. He liked the story and he cried when he saw the ending. Now, what if this game is just ass and he got emotional for no reason? Nah, this gives me a lot of hope though. I want Game Freak to write a good story. There are eight gym leaders in this game. So even though Kakaman only showed seven, there's eight in total. Either one is hidden or it was already shown to us as in Nomona or something. So you have Bug, Normal, Ghost, Grass, Water, Ice, Electric, Psychic. Which one of these typings is the eighth one missing here amongst these seven? This is one of the most exciting ones to me. Quests are substory. Do you know how sick that is? Being an open world game, if you can go to towns, accept little quests, and go on missions, then they're doing the open world right. We had a glimpse of this with Legends. This could mean something good. But this next one, the game will have DLC. Now, in a weird way, we knew this was coming. We have a strong sense that they're gonna pull the whole Crown Tundra thing again and stretch Scarlet and Violet for another year. Or stretch it till at least the next summer. To hear there's a DLC is nice. Maybe this means though, that there ain't no post game. Anyhow, the last thing he says, the professors aren't the villains. Excuse me? That sounds exactly like what a professor would say. You freaking liar. I know they're evil. I guess they're not. How the hell did they end up here? You know what then? The professors were minding their business and the evil team pulled them to this time period. We're done. That's all the Kakaman post. Thankfully, while he did tell us a bunch of things, he didn't get to spoil anything too deep, which I can only be thankful for. Like if this was a Sword and Shield type season and he spoiled the entire Eternatus thing and Zashin and Zamazenta, there'd be nothing left in the game. But I don't think it's because Kakaman can restrain himself. I think he just doesn't know. He said he doesn't know if the third legendary is a dragon, doesn't know if this region is bigger than Sword and Shield's region, doesn't know if the gimmick is like Mega Evolution. And now we're done. Meanwhile, many fake Kakaman Twitter accounts have come up and said the most crazy things that you guys are sending me. Some stuff like Volo returns in this game. Why would he return, bro? So before I end this video, let me show you some of the pictures. Flamingo Pokemon? Oh, look at that! It's a flamingo! It looks like he's given the peace sign. It looks like a lifeguard up in his tower. But the more you look at it, the more you start to see it. It's got a Swana-like body. It's got its two hand wings over here. We got a flamingo. Flamingo's gonna have the ability strong legs, where kicking moves do double the damage. Cause look how strong those legs are. Flamingo feels like a long deserved Pokemon anyway. But bro, you better not be a standalone Pokemon that doesn't evolve. It, it sucks, doesn't it? When they make Pokemon like Drudagon, it's like a big middle finger to anyone who catches it. Aside from Pokemon like Lapras, who invented Pokemon that never evolve or don't have a pre-evolution? Second picture from Kakaman headquarters. This one. Fine job, sir. He censored out all the important information so that they'll never find you, yeah? You can see this kind of dog roaming in the distance. Now that dog do look like the Centro dog. But idea going around is that it's a pig. It's Lechonk's evolution. Ku had that one riddle that he posted before Lechonk was revealed. This one right here, where he said, would look good if it were white. At first we thought maybe there's a regional grump pig that's white, but here he is here and he's black. Maybe Ku tweeting that as just a personal preference. Or maybe it's shiny colors white and Ku likes how that looks better. Either way, people call that Lechonk. One cool thing that one of you guys pointed out to me is that remember this photo of this flower-like Pokemon? This is really weird to see, but if you put a picture of Lilip beside it, it looks like a messed up Lilip. Like something has been done to a Lilip. Maybe it has to do with the gimmick of this game, but it looks like there's a connection there. Zigzagoonies on Twitter took some of these screenshots and drew some 
renditions of them. Remember when Ku tweeted that Quaxley's head has been revealed? So maybe Quaxley's full form looks something like this. Here's one they did for the Sprigatito looking screenshot. Man, that is a freaky thing. Could you imagine going in the woods and you see a walking cat? Anyhow, the last images circulating, allegedly from Kakaman, is this. It's clearly a Jigglypuff, but he looks angry. At first, people thought this had to do with RFs, whatever that is now. But then the idea is coming up that maybe this has to do with the gimmick of this game. And so maybe when Ku tweeted about the avatar, its avatar is the new concept thing that I was going to tease in September. Maybe this is that avatar thing he was talking about. And there's one more photo that goes with it for Among Us. This is the last photo. This is an Among Us that looks like it's aged a bit. Some leaves are growing down. It's got some spikes in its shield. It looks like the rogue Among Us from its village. It seems that this along with the Jigglypuff, might have something to do with the gimmick of this game. And for the most part, that's the Kakaman trilogy. There's a phrase he said going around about Pokemon being able to time warp. So maybe that's related to these two screenshots of the Jiggly and Among Us. Maybe these two right here are the past and future forms that we were just playing around with. Maybe it's a Jigglypuff reverted to some angry feelings. Maybe it's some old primal Among Us. I don't know. To end it off, Riddler Koo did say a long time ago when asked if Mega's return in this game that the gimmick in this game is a concept like Mega Evolution. So maybe this is what he was talking about. Maybe you send an Among Us in and you push the button and it pretty much like Mega Evolution turns into that. Maybe in a weird way, we have something close to Mega Evolution back in the game. Well, I'm gonna call it quits here, guys. Go on and shank that like button. I know a lot of people enjoy when people just tell us a bunch of information about the games, but this stuff is only exciting for one day. We got lucky he didn't tell us important story things, especially since he beat the game, apparently. If you beat the game, why don't you know if the region's bigger than Galar? All right, whatever. I'm gonna see you on the next video. Take care. Bitch, I'm the man. Give me my spot on that throne. Bro